my name is Sydney and today I wanted to talk about line editing. Now that I've officially finished my line editing for Pitchfork, I wanted to talk about it. There's a bunch of stuff that I learned. I also want to go over the statistics stuff with you. So looking at word counts and stuff, especially since my main goal with line editing was to reduce my word count drastically. If you've watched the last few of my videos, you know more about what I've been doing with line editing and like my progress and how that's been going. My last video was a 24 hour line editing vlog. So I got up at midnight and I tried to stay up for 24 hours straight <laughs> to try to do as much line editing as possible. Um, so I will link that video down below and I will also link a couple other videos down below that show my line editing journey thus far. Several videos ago I showed you my line editing toolkit and so I have that here in this box. All of this stuff will look familiar if you saw my line editing toolkit but mainly I want to talk about the two manuscripts that I have within. We've got these two babies all nice and bound. Um, 543 pages is what this was. 134,805 words I believe is where draft four which is what this was started. I started line editing on August 12th of this year and I finished August 6th and so my line editing started at 134,885 words. My goal word count was to get it down to 115,000 because the 134,000 I told you before is way out of the range of of what is accepted of my genre by like agents and publishers which is typically in the 100 to 120,000 range so I definitely wanted to get it down to 115 so we could be more within that ballpark and I definitely passed this. I got down to 112,271. Yeah, it got to a point where like I was actually very worried that I was getting rid of too many words to the point where I'd have to start adding things, um, which I may still have to do just in just for like plot reasons and whatnot, but not for word count reasons at least. So I'm well within the range, so I'm good. I'm, I finally reached the word count <laughs> that's acceptable. Altogether, I removed 22,614 words, dude. That's a lot of words just from line editing. And that came about with like deleting some scenes that were redundant. Like maybe there were two scenes that were very similar to each other. So I combined those scenes. Finding ways to combine things and to consolidate things or just removing things that didn't need to be there. Um, and also just removing a lot of excess words. Like I had a whole list of words um, in my line editing toolkit video that I wanted to get rid of. You know, things like was, things like that and just. Through the entire almost two months that it took me to do this line editing, I learned quite a few things. And as I learned these things, I wanted to remember them for future line editing and also just as I continued my line editing process. And so I wrote them down and I've got my computer over here because my phone is acting all kinds of wonky, like the screen doesn't want to turn on even though the phone is on, but we won't get into that right now. I've called this list my line editing diary. And I have a list of 14 things here that I've learned. And I wanted to go over those with you, so let's get into it. Number one, um, just for a bit of context, when I started my line editing, I also picked up a couple of books just to kind of look at to study the language and the formation of sentences and stuff like that. And one of those books was a book of short stories by various authors, so I thought that was a good way to kind of get a broad sense of style. And the other one was a Haruki Murakami book, A Wild Sheep Chase, which really really good book I think. So Haruki Murakami is a Japanese author so his book was translated but I still like the way that the language was formed, the way that the story was told, um, just the prose in general. When I was reading that book at the very beginning of my line editing I learned this. So it says, reading Haruki Murakami and thinking that all those words to cut shouldn't be cut at the expense of clarity or your writerly voice. So that is to say that that long list of words I wanted to get rid of in my line editing toolkit video, while it's great to get rid of maybe most instances of that word, I shouldn't have to get rid of every single one of those words, especially if it sacrifices the clarity of the sentence or it sac sacrifices my writing style. So sometimes those words need to be there. In a Wild Sheep Chase, every time I noticed one of those words, I was like, hey, that word is there in that sentence and the sentence still sounds good. Like I'm not taking points off of this, ju this book just because it uses that word that I was thinking I needed to get rid of. A lot of times those words do clog up the sentences or they, there's a better way to arrange the sentence so that word isn't there. But this doesn't need to be done 100% of the time. Number two, it may sound simple, but make sure every sentence is simple to understand. Don't opt for purple prose at the expense of easy understanding. Find the balance between descriptive language and simplicity. So what that's saying is that the best sentences 
The ones that will keep readers immersed in the story are the ones that are easy to understand. You don't want your sentence to be overly complex, having all these run-ons and clauses and, you know, complex vocabulary that your reader is like, wait, what does that mean? Or what is this sentence saying? Like, you know, it becomes too confusing. So the best sentences are just simple. You know, that doesn't mean that it, it can't have any sort of, you know, cool vocabulary. It can't be formatted in a, in a unique way, but it just needs to be understood. If you're writing a sentence and you find yourself getting too bogged down and how can I make this sentence sound prettier? Hold up, take a step back and make sure, think about what you're trying to convey with this sentence. Like what information are you trying to say? You know, if you're trying to say that the character, you know, walked across the room, maybe just say that they walked across the room. I mean, like there's different ways you can say that, you know, you can use different words for walked. You can say that the person was here and all of a sudden they were over there. Like there's different ways to say things that you can still be clear, but not confusing. Three, there's beauty in brevity. It can hinder understanding to be long-winded. So this kind of goes off the last thing where, you know, sometimes a really concise short sentence is the best way to go as opposed to being long-winded and wordy and run-on sentences again. You know, of course it's good to have a variety of short and long sentence and medium length sentences, but every sentence doesn't need to be long, long, long. Number four, sometimes, even if you feel like you can keep going, take a break. And I'm talking to you, Sydney, from the 24-hour edit-a-thon line editing vlog. Take a break. The longer you look at your story, the more immersed you can get and the more likely you are to forget that you're supposed to be line editing. Get lost in some words that are not your own. Study the sentence structure of other writers, and not just one, and learn something you can take back to your writing. So, so this one is saying a couple of different things. One, take breaks. Even if you're feeling good, sometimes it's good to step, step back and take a break because maybe time, the fact that four hours of time have passed since the last time you looked away from your computer or your manuscript, time is trying to tell you that it's been long enough that you should take a break, you know? Watch some TV, do something mindless, don't think about your story for a bit, maybe look, read another book, study their sentences the way that I studied Haruki Murakami's, you know, get a sense for other authors' style, and that can help especially if maybe you're feeling stagnant with the way you're writing, because sometimes I noticed I would be reading my sentences, and, you know, maybe there was a few sentences in particular that just sounded sort of dull, and so, or I would get too caught up in my own writing style to see that you know, maybe it needs a bit more variety. Um, so just looking elsewhere for inspiration with your writing can be super helpful. And of course, if you learn anything from like watching TV or reading other books or just taking breaks, you know, you can come back to that and bring something new to your writing. Oh, I really like the way Haruki Murakami formed this sentence. Is there a way I can bring that sort of sentence structure into my story? Like these are things that are super beneficial to you. Number five, on the other hand, with taking breaks, if you start to feel that impending sense of burnout or the need to do something else, it's essential that you step away and come back to it later with greater motivation and rejuvenation, even if you're almost done, even if you're on deadline. So again, with taking breaks, I, I learned the, kind of the hard way at the end of my 24-hour edit-a-thon vlog that like while I did take several breaks throughout the 24 hours when it came to like the very end I had like 11 pages left to line edit and I just wanted to power through even though once I hit that last 11 pages I was feeling this sense of like anxious claustrophobia like I needed to just get out and get away from this manuscript but I didn't listen to myself and so I felt super burned out by eight o'clock at night. It's really important to give yourself those breaks otherwise you could start resenting your story for making you feel so burned out and you may not want to come back to it at all let alone, you know, 15 minutes from now after you've taken a break. So take the break. It'll pay off in the long run. Number six, if there's a certain section, be it a sentence, paragraph, or scene, that you've edited the crap out of and are very proud of, read it to yourself. Remind yourself what you're trying to accomplish with, re with the rest of your sentences. Not thinking about the negatives, but looking at the positives. You know, sometimes you come across a really, really beautiful sentence and you're like, oh my gosh, did I write that? Who knew I was so capable? You know, like sometimes you come across those moments and it's important to remember those, like especially when you start to feel down or especially when you start to doubt the quality of your writing in general, you know, like maybe you read a bunch of, you know, sucky sentences in a particular scene and you're like, like what kind of crap writer wrote this? And you're like, oh, I must have, that makes me a crap writer. And sometimes you can let those moments spiral out of control and you feel super down about your writing. But it's important to remember those gems that you've come across and to remind yourself when you're feeling down that you are capable of good writing and it's okay to feel down, but you can't let that feeling downness linger. Number seven, sometimes, <coughs> most times, it's best to go over chapters a second time. 
Turns out I would I may have been rather stingy the first time, especially when my goal was to get rid of some words and maybe I didn't get rid of any words or I started to feel lazy and didn't feel like crossing out words, which happens more than I would like. Um, this may also be done as a second round of editing, which focuses on stylistics, so re-envisioning re sentences and paragraphs to beautify the prose without getting too purple prosy. So what this is saying is that sometimes you can miss things the first time, sometimes you might not even realize the first time that that sentence doesn't need to be there or that that sentence is too similar to the other sentences around it or that sentence is too dull. Writers talk about you know when they're editing to do several rounds of editing instead of trying to catch everything in one edit you know do different rounds that are each dedicated to different things so the same could apply to line editing you know this, this round of line editing for me was focused on reducing the word count but I'll probably do a round of line editing in the future where I focus on like beautifying the sentences. Number eight, editing sprints. Who knew? <laughs> like editing sprints are super helpful, especially if you're just sitting down for the day to start your line editing. Um, because I found that a lot of times, especially on days where I really just didn't feel like doing it, and you'll notice in my line editing blog that I started out with a couple of line editing sprints. Even if you're writing, you know, you don't have to be editing. Those sprints are really good. You know, set a timer for 10 minutes, for 15, 30, whatever. And just sit down there and you've blocked out that time to focus on whatever you're working on. And it can be really helpful for getting started. And then once you've done a couple of those and you're in the groove of writing or editing, you may not even need the sprints to continue. But they're a good kind of jumping off point. Number nine, implementing edits into a Word doc is not that bad. In fact, if you do all the hard work on the art copy, it's a breeze. It's energizing to comb through the changes so quickly and see the word count swiftly drop. So I wrote this quite a while ago when I was probably still fairly early in the, in the line editing process because I kind of feel a bit differently now. Like I say that like implementing really is not that bad. The hard part comes with how tedious it can be. You know you're doing the same thing all the time, you're not really thinking, but it's just sort of this robotic act that you know it, it involves almost no creativity. Um, especially if you're just transferring what you've written from the hard copy into the computer. But it is truly satisfying to break up those moments of physically writing on your manuscript and crossing out things with your pen. It's good to juxtapose those with transferring a couple of chapters at a time into your computer because then you start to see the word count go down. Especially if it feels like all you're doing is marking stuff up and you're like, I have no idea what my progress is. You know, if you transfer things to the computer, you start to see that, you know, you start to see the word count go down if that's your goal or go up if that's your goal um, or whatever your goal is. You can see those changes become reality. And this kind of leads into my next one. Do the hard work on the hard copy. That's what it's for. It's in the name. You'll despise your past self when you have to do work in the Word doc. So I mentioned this again in my line editing vlog where the whole reason I printed out my manuscript is to mark the crap out of it. I don't want to be marking the crap out of it when I get it to my computer. You know, I don't want to be think, I don't want to write a note in the margins of uh, figure this out later. No, I need to figure it out right now. That was the whole point of me printing it out, right? Um, so when I go to the computer to transfer those edits, all the work has already been done. I'm just robotically putting it in there. Number 11. That is not 11 fingers. I don't have 11 fingers. <laughs> um, think about the changes before you write them on hard copy. Otherwise you'll make an unreadable jumbled mess that your future implementing self will want to thump you for when they can't tell what changes you wanted. So sometimes I'll be line editing and I'll edit a sentence as I'm reading it. But then I'll get to the end of that sentence and I'll realize, oh no, that whole sentence doesn't need to be there. So then I'll cross out what I wrote and then I'll cross out the sentence that was, you know, typed on the paper and then I'll write in something else, like maybe a different way to word that sentence or, you know, something. And it just becomes like all these sentences like written around this area and it's hard to tell, okay, which of these did I want to keep and which of them did I not mean to write down? You know, like it becomes very jumbled. So probably a good idea in certain sections, especially if it's a section that requires a lot of work, is to read the whole sentence or read the whole paragraph before you start marking it up. You know, think about what changes you're going to make so that way you don't end up with a bunch of your additions crossed out. Number 12. If you feel like you're not improving the chapter during line editing, stop and take a break. Read a book, reassess your editing goals, or just clear your head. So this will happen sometimes. Like I'm line editing a chapter and I find that I'm not really marking up the page or I don't really know how to improve the prose on that page. And so or I find like I'm just not in the mood, like I just don't feel like doing this. So in that case, it's a good idea to step back and put the manuscript away for, you know, a little while or for the day and come back to it later. 
the whole point of me doing this is to improve the prose. So if I'm not doing that, then there's no point for me to do that. Now that's not to say to give up. That's just saying that maybe I've been editing for too long that day, or maybe I don't, maybe I'm not yet ready to line edit. So maybe I need to step back for a couple of weeks or something. Um, or maybe I just don't know or maybe I know that the sentence needs work, but I don't know what exactly needs to change about it. So then that's a good opportunity to go pick up a book and look at that author's turn of phrase, you know? Number 13. Use a pen that dries quickly so it doesn't smear. <laughs> when I first started this, um, I was using a red pen that was a gel pen. And you know, gel pens take forever to dry and they smear. So I would turn the page and like continue line editing on the back of that page. But then I would realize that, you know, what I just wrote is now pressed onto the page that it touched. So it makes it harder to read what I'm writing or it makes it look like there's markups on a section where there wasn't meant to be markups. It's just, you know, the ink transferring to that page. So at some point I switched to a red pen that was not a gel pen and that was like, it's the little things in life. You know, when you don't have your ink smearing all over the place, you'd be surprised how much more improved your line editing becomes. <laughs> and number 14, yeah. Um, Always a good idea to bookmark where in the hard copy manuscript you left off, whether in marking up or transcribing, but definitely in transcribing. So you'll notice on my manuscript that there's this string here. I finished editing for the day, I would drop this string into the page and close the bind up and you know, that way next time I could figure out where exactly I left off. Um, so I wouldn't have to flip through and look for where the ink markings end. The other thing is that if you are kind of switching between, okay, I'm going to edit a couple of chapters on my hard copy and then I'll transcribe them and then I'll edit you know like it becomes this thing of like okay I'm ready to transcribe these changes but where exactly did I leave off so you can leave a bookmark in your word doc or whatever editing computer tool you use or you can leave like a physical bookmark in here or some sort of marking with your pen so that way you know exactly where you left off and that's just like it saves you a few minutes of flipping through and trying to figure out where you left off all right folks I'm officially free of line editing for the time being. I have talked about it, I have finished doing it, I am done. Of course, like I said, there may be another round in the future where I f focus on stylistics and prose and stuff, but that's like at least a couple months away. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have, you know, taken away a few kernels of knowledge from this video for whenever you dive into your line editing process. And I hope that, you know, whatever writing projects you're working on, I hope that they're going really well. <sighs> Boy, it's good to be free, I tell you. Although you're never really free with line editing. Because now I'm thinking about other stories that I'm writing, you know, Stormcloud in particular, because that whole draft is written, you know, it just needs like editing and stuff. But I haven't, I haven't line edited that book yet. And I know at some point in the near future, I'm going to have to. And I'm honestly dreading it. <laughs> like, I just don't want to do it. But, you know, it's a necessary evil. You know, it's kind of like having a job. Like, it's great to make money, but you still have to pay taxes. If that was a relevant analogy. I don't know. That's just another thing that I have to deal with is taxes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching this video. Down below, let me know how you guys are doing in your creative projects. If you're writing, if you're editing, if you're line editing, if you're planning, if you're if you're going to do NaNoWriMo or anything like that, because I'm going to be doing NaNoWriMo, but you know, we'll talk about that in a future video. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a like, hit subscribe, and I will see you next time. Toodaloo! Also, here's my foot for some reason.